So first things first, our first major operation in our journey towards a silent ant miner environment is to make the power supply a silent operation. I'm going to show you what equipment you need to do this, and then we're going to get started just diving right in. It's actually a very simple swap as long as you take the correct safety precautions. So let's get going swapping the fan out on an amp on, on a Bitmain APW3 power supply. I'll see you there. Now, before we begin, I would need to say this. This can be a bit of a risky operation because this is the actual unit uh, that is what controls the electricity. This is the dangerous part about all of ant miners is heat and electricity that we're talking about here. So when you do this operation on your APW3 or APW7, you want to make sure that this device is not hot. This device has not been plugged in in recent history because it, can, it actually has capacitors in it that can store electricity. And if you touch them, you will get fried. So uh, make sure that this unit has been off for a long time. It's not storing any electricity. It's not hot. It's not making any noise. Nothing like that. This thing needs to be sitting idle for a long time before you pop the hood on it and perform this operation. So with that being said, let's take a look at the equipment you need in order to actually get started swapping out the fan on an APW3. So before I actually jump into that, I wanted to remember I said that I was going to look up the power cable that I'm using. This is the exact power cable that I'm using right here. Look, it comes in, in, in different colors too. Right down here, you could choose like a cool blue or a green or a pink or a red or a white. Wherever you want, whatever's going to fit your aesthetic. Uh, I just went with the black ones, and I, I got a couple. And these are the 10-foot ones, and you can see they're only $8.65 uh, on Amazon. If you are looking for the links to any of these products, look down in the description, and you'll find the links to all of these items. It'll take you straight there, uh, and you can purchase them. These are affiliate links, so do know that, um, but it doesn't cost you anything extra to use them, so that's pretty cool. All right, so now, the first thing you need is an adapter. The fan that we're about to purchase is a I think it's a three pin fan uh, so it's going to have three pins that it that it, it wants to plug into but the actual board on the power supply unit itself only uses two pins so this is a little uh two pin female to uh, uh, male adapt so that the two pin section right here is female meaning that the board itself is going to have two prongs that go into it uh and the, the fan is going to have a three pin uh, female section here. So this is the male section and it's only going to use, you can barely see it, but there's two pins right there that it's going to use. So we're going to have to have this adapter first of all, to actually be able to plug our fan into the board. Uh, and this is going to create a little bit like four inches of excess length that you can kind of tuck away. Uh, but you'll see when we get into that. Now, the last thing right here is the fan itself. This is the Noctua fan, 60 millimeters. Um, and this is, it, like, it literally, they're the exact same fan as what we're about to pull out. It's just that this one is quiet. <laughs> so um, we, we're just going to pop out the old one, drop in the new one, plug it in with the adapter, and then we're done. So these are the items that you need. Again, check the description. If you need the links, you can buy them directly. They are affiliate links. Uh, so I'll get a tiny, tiny, tiny little cutback or kickback, but it's not going to cost you anything extra to use them. So without further ado, let's grab our Phillips head screwdriver, get our APW3 device and our supplies and get started. Okay, so it's time to begin the operation. We're looking at it from the top down on this particular angle. Now, if I rotate it on its side, there are three screws on each side that we need to remove here. Uh, there's a little bit of a glare, so I'm going to try my best because of the lighting. If I turn the light off, let me just see if this makes it any better. Eh, it makes it a little better. I'm going to roll with that. So these screws are fine. These are fine, small screws. So you need a Phillips head screwdriver uh, that's going to be, you know, suitable for these fine, tiny little screws. And you need to know that these suckers are usually in there really tight. Uh, this one happens to be kind of loose, which is nice. Um, and... They're not very long screws. They're, they're easy to lose. So I'm just going to set them to the side right here. Yeah, that one's really in there. So I'm going to try a different screwdriver like this guy, which has a sharp tip on it. Ah, need to reverse the direction. There we go. Much better. 
All right. Come on. So there's that. And here comes screw number three. I'll set those three to the side. Now I'm going to flip it over and we repeat the process. So you want to have a fine tip screwdriver that has a lot of torque, a lot of length that you can really get in there and turn these things because like I say, sometimes they are really in there good. Um, and those short stubby Phillips head screwdrivers, they don't get the job done uh, the way you need to get them done. So there's screws number one, two, and three on this side. And at this point, the hood is ready to come off. So this is the part where you really got to start being careful. Now, if we look at this real quick, so you see we got four screws on the fan here. This thing looks ugly, doesn't it? It's all rusty and everything. It's gonna be a good thing to get rid of all this. So we're gonna put it back down the way it was with bit main at the top. And now we can literally just slide the top right off. It just slides right off. And there's this plastic cover in here uh, to keep you nice and safe. Now I'm not an electrical person. I don't know electronics, but I've been told that these circular things right here that's where the electricity is stored, and that's what you want to be, you know, extra careful around. Uh, oh, boy. Look at this. They gunked up. What a surprise. They gunked up the actual fan module here. Covered it with stuff. Okay. So this right here is where the, the actual pins for the fan are. So I'm going to have to have some fun here cleaning this mess up so that I can remove the fan. Here's how I'm going to do this. First thing I'm going to do is remove the fan itself. So I'm going to unscrew the four screws for the fan. Set that to the side because I will reuse the screws. And I'm going to set this to the side here. An interesting thing to note about this fan installation. Here, let's get this. I'm going to throw this grill away. I don't want that anymore. Is when I pull this out, the, the wire actually goes through this slot on the heatsink. So, yeah, they really gunk this thing up good. I don't know what's going on here. What I may end up having to do is take a razor to that and kind of cut it out. I have not seen this done before. I mean, I've seen this gunky stuff before, but uh, I've not seen it done on a power supply. I guess that's why the screws were so loose. All right, give me a second while I go get a razor and so I can actually like break this stuff up. Okay, so uh, I finally got it to come out. Uh, let me get it back into frame here because that was that was a lot of work. Um, so I did have to do some, some razor work to like slice some of this gunk away. Uh, you can see if I kind of hold it up, that white junk, it's like a, it's like a glue almost that they have here. Uh, and it was caked all the way down to the bottom and it was stuck there on the bottom. And I want to make sure that I didn't damage anything else along the way. Everything looks pretty clean here. I don't see any cut wires or anything. I don't see anything bent. So uh, I think we're okay. And now my dilemma is down here at the end of the wire, they did the same thing. So for you, there's a very good chance that you won't have any problems here. You'll just be able to pop your fan out uh, from, from the slot. And you'll be able to pop the, the end wire out here from uh, the pins. But now I've got to chip away at this gunk that's on my pinholes and then I can get started uh, actually plugging in the new fan. So let me just work on that. So because of all of the white gunk, you're not really gonna be able to see this very well uh, unless I put like just a little bit of a shade Right there. I mean, so it's not where I'm at. It's, it's actually up here. There we go. Right there at the tip of my other finger. Uh, this is where the uh, the fan slot is. <laughs> it's so hard to see because of all of the white gunk and pasty stuff that they put on this modified power supply. Uh, you know, of course, the eBay seller doesn't tell you this is this power supply has been opened up and modified. But here we are. Uh, so now I've got the fan out and I can proceed with setting up the new fan. So, uh, again, very likely that your installation will go much smoother than mine, but I've got my adapter. I'm gonna get my fan. All I need out of this box is the fan itself. I don't need anything else. 
So it does come with all sorts of great stuff, um, and <laughs> including like adapters and cables that you don't need. Um, but here we go. So I'll take my fan out. Now this part's important. Very, very, very important. Very important. This fan is designed to blow outward, or we want the power supply uh, to blow the f blow hot air outward. So this works when uh, the fan itself has the label. It's got this label that's blue and brown. Uh, in this case, the orientation of that fan will blow it outside. So we want the label to go... I got some gunk in here. I want to make sure I get all that gunk out. We want the label uh, to be pointed outwards so that it blows the hot air outwards. So I can slide it. It just slides right in and it fits perfectly. And I have the wire end right here in this top corner so that it can lay perfectly down in the groove of this heat sink, just like that. You see there? So uh, this this is actually long enough to, to reach this clip right here, but the problem is, is again, this is a three pin plug and this slot only fits a two pin plug, which is why we need our adapter. So I'm gonna take my adapter and just plug it in here. And I'm gonna plug the two pin section in down here kind of working around all of this gunk, of course. There we go. So now we're plugged in. All I have to do now is put the screws back in, put the lid back on, screw that in, and we're done. So let's screw the fan in first. I'll take the four screws that I had before. And the last screw here. Now we'll put the plastic back on top with the little L shape towards the top here. Just like that. And the lid. Just like this. Kind of make sure that we can put it on safely there. Line up the holes. Got to move my wire a little bit here. It's preventing the lid from coming all the way down. So I just got to tuck it over to the side a little bit. See, that's what I was talking about. Those extra four inches can actually be a bit of a pain because now you've got all this excess that has to be up. Now I put popped the top off. Okay. <laughs> there. Let's kind of move it and tuck it over to the side. That way it doesn't get in the way of the actual screws. Ah, there we go. Plastic got in the way. Everything's getting in the way. Ah. There. Can this shut? There we go. Now we're looking good. Okay. At this point, we have a silent Bitmain PSU. Again, can't stress this enough. Make sure this fan blows outward. Very important to get straight. But there you go. That's it. It's just pop the fan out, drop the new one in. Hopefully you don't have to deal with the white gunk that I had to deal with. But there you go. Now the power supply section is done. We're ready to move on to the actual amp miner itself.